What's going on YouTube? You're watching one of my narrated Wi-Fi battles and we are now living in the era when Pokemon X and Y is out. This is a very good thing. Um, sorry if my voice sounds weird, I kind of lost it earlier today. But I wanted to put up a battle video because at the end of it I want to talk about some X and Y stuff. So, today's match is a um, kind of a mixed OU-ish uh, match that I had against uh, Uncanny Madman. I just off with my scarf. I Drygon, he starts off with Miltank. Um, shout out to you guys who have run into hordes of Miltank or hordes of Tauros with one Miltank. Very, very odd little combinations there. He makes a good prediction this which is on Ferrothorn, because uh, there I'm not going to use a fire move on Miltank. And I uh, Miltank I uh, Miltank also would have taken the U-turn relatively well, so you know, that works out pretty well in his favor, I'd say. Um, but anyways though, I end up going out into my side your lift, just in case he wants to leech seed, uh, also activate my flame orb right here, just in case he wants to try to, um, thunder wave me, it's not going to work. He makes another good play and goes on to Heracross, I didn't know if his Heracross was one of those moxie ones, or if his Heracross was, uh, Guts variant, so I decided to just go ahead and go for the cycle shift to send the burn over, since he switched it into my side your lift, I'm assuming that he had, uh, the Guts ability, which of course will raise his attack by 50% for him being burned. Which of course means that I don't want to stay in in case he goes for Stone Edge. Um, really, if he hits me with a Mega Horn at this point, it's going to do a lot of damage. He actually has a Night Slash, which would have definitely... I think that would have KO'd my Sigilyph. Uh, I, I can't say for sure. I've never actually been hit by a Night Slash on my um, Sigilyph before from a hair cross. Well, my Sigilyph is not as bulky. It's not the Cosmic Power variant as Call Mine and it's more speedy. So I'm saying he would have probably KO'd. And I could not KO him without any Call Mine boost for stored power. So I'm gonna go out into my Paladon. He switches out there using Night Slash, which tells me that he's probably scarfed. He's not banned because I did not do very much damage at all. Uh, and I just get to set up my Stealth Rocks for free. Gastrodon comes out and I'm guessing he's probably going to go for a Scald. Which uh, Sigilith does not really fear that at all. He actually goes for Ice Beam, which is a great play, because that would have hit either of those Pokemon. That would have hit, um, my Sigilith super effective, and also would have hit Hippowdon super effective. Seeing the damage that it does, I know if I Roost, he'll do half that damage, and, uh, I can get up to a point where I can comfortably use Calm Mind in his face. And, uh, he actually just goes for Ice Beam again, probably not predicting necessarily the, the Roost there or just trying to secure the KO. Knowing how much it did the first time, Call Mine is going to cut that damage in half, which is great. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen the animation for Call Mind in uh, X and Y, but it looks so cool. I am interested to know what uh, animations you guys have seen in X Y that you're excited about, just in case I've missed them. Among my top favorites are going to be uh, Brave Bird, Retaliate, and Work Up. All those moves have very cool animations, and they are really taking advantage of the power of the 3DS there. Uh, I've seen some developers in, uh, I think it was a single interview, talking about how uh, Pokemon X and Y is really pushing the specs on the 3DS, which is good because I don't feel like a lot of games have really been doing that up to this point. But uh, I, again, I'm just going to keep on Calm Minding up here. He sees that it's kind of pointless to stay in with his Gastrodon, and I'm getting all these Calm Minds. He's doing less and less damage. And, uh, his Nidoking has Thunderbolt. I was actually thinking he might have Sucker Punch, which is why he brought it in. But Thunderbolt is not going to do enough to KO me, even after the Life Force Shear Force boost. And I'm just going to Roost again, because I wanted to see what he was going to go for, whether he had Sucker Punch, or whether he was going to go for an attack. Furthermore, I get the information that by the fact that he outsped me, he is Scarfed. So, uh, that means he's either going to go for th another Thunderbolt, or he's going to switch out again. And, uh, I have several Pokemon that I can switch out into to take a Thunderbolt. And he actually switches out into Heracross. So I'm thinking he expected me to switch out maybe into... Uh... Let's see. It would have made the most sense to, to take the Thunderbolt for me to switch out into maybe Hydreigon. Uh, because 
Heracross would have outsped my High Dragon. Of course, he doesn't know that I'm Scarped at this point, so I think he was expecting that at that point. Uh, Cloyster comes in. I don't really care if it Shell Smashes up, because I'm just going to burn it. Uh, it would have been really bad if he had a, a Lumberry there. But uh, with the burn and the weird HP defensive investment I have on my side to lift, it is enough to take the skill link uh, Icicle Spear, barely. And that may have just been min-max damage. But at the same token, now I get to either hit him with an attack, I get to roost up, I have a lot of options available to me. And he can't really do much about it, which is great. Uh, unless he has Ice Shard, that would stop me in my tracks. But he does not. He actually goes back on into Mill Tank. But uh, at this point, I was kind of like, okay, I kind of got the main threat out of the way here, the Heracross that threatened my team so much. So I just decided to go straight for Stored Power. And that's actually a 2-hit KO on Mill Tank, uh, which is fantastic because I know I outspeed it. So I don't really have any reason to not try to go for that, I guess, is the main thing. Uh, so he actually goes for Heal Bell, showing that he outspeeds me, which I was kind of surprised about. But uh, that was smart because now his Cloister is now usable again, and he sacrifices Mill Tank to make sure that his Cloister gets a chance to sing another song in the battle. Nidoking comes back out. We found out earlier that his Nidoking does outspeed. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, wary of just letting my uh, Sigilith die. So I go out and hit out on expecting the Thunderbolt, because that's what he went for last time. And I know this time if he switches out, he definitely is choice, probably choice specs. But uh, if he doesn't, then he's probably the good old Life Orb variant. And so he does end up switching out, which makes me confirm that thought that I had earlier. He goes on in the Gastrodon, which is fine by me, because uh, I was actually just going to Roar. So I get a little bit of damage on to the rest of his team. I put him in a position, hopefully, where he doesn't want to stay in. But unfortunately, I Roar him out into his Ferrothorn, which means he's going to get an opportunity to set up Entry Hazards, or he can Power Whip me. Neither of those are very good outcomes for me. So, uh, But of course, you know, the fewer Pokemon your opponent has, each one has a, you know, an increased probability of chance of being sent in for the roar. So in case he wants to just uh, power whip, I'm going out into as Colio. Or if he wants to set up entry hazards, I'm going to have an opportunity here to get my HP back. So he actually goes for Leap Seed, which is perfect, because that, at the end of the day, that's not actually going to do anything to uh, me. So I'm going to roost up in his face. Uh, if he decides to power whip, whatever, it's not going to KO me at this point. And then I can just cycle shift that burn over to him, which would be a fun time for me. Uh, he goes for Gyro Ball, which I was not expecting. You don't see that as often on, on Ferrothorns uh, these days. And uh, that doesn't kill me either, again, because I have such a weird HP defensive investment. Uh, I kind of just get barely saved. And I think I ran those uh, counts on the HP defensive investment specifically to live... Uh, I think Ice Shards from Weavile, I think, is what I was trying to live. But anyways, though, um, I could have just avoided all that by running Cosmic Power, but I wanted to take advantage of Sigilith's unusually high speed. So, uh, here he, I get a chance to just go out into my Choice Bandit. Stoutland here, after he takes out my Sigilith. He's burned, so I'm not really that worried about him. And he actually lives a Banded Superpower. That was pretty impressive, not going to lie. Uh, I have to take some iron bar damage for my trouble, and he also gets to leap seed me. That's not really too big a problem because I, uh, Stalin isn't really designed to stay in. He's designed to come in, hit something, and then switch out, uh, generally speaking. So, uh, that's kind of what my plan is here. It would be really nice to take out the Feral Thorn, because now he's getting, uh, recovered from the leap seed, which is all setting the burn. And that's not really what I would like to see go on. So I decided to just stay in and go for another superpower, even if he switched out, uh, that, you know, it would be a neutral superpower at that point, because the choice band would offset the minus one. But now I'm at minus one, minus two defense, Ferrothorn is dead, which is great. I, uh, unfortunately, the only downside of this is that whatever he brings in, I'm going to be basically forced to switch out if I want to keep my, uh, Stalin alive, because the superpower is not going to do any damage, especially against a Nidid King that resists it. And, uh, he's been using Thunderbolt a lot. That's all that I know he has. So we're going to go out into, um, Blastoise here. Because I know 
he the only thing that I know about him is that he has Thunderbolt. So going on in a Blastoise, expecting maybe the Ice Beam to hit a Paladon, or uh, a Poison move, perhaps. Uh, my, uh, I think this is Kodara, my specially defensive uh, Blastoise. So that right there is going to work out. I wasn't actually sure what he'd switch into, but I figured Gastrodon was a good bet, so I went for Toxic instead of trying to go for a Water move, because going for a Water move would just kind of pop up his Gastrodon a little bit. And that works out, so I hit him with Toxic. Uh, I didn't know what else I really wanted to do here. I could just bring in um, my... You know, I, I had a couple options here, but at the same time, I didn't really want anything being Toxic, and I also didn't want anything getting hit by a Water move or anything like that. So, um, it, I decided to go back out into Hit Paladon just because I saw the Toxic coming, but I didn't really want it on my Blastoise if I could avoid it, because I would really need Blastoise to kind of come, I could take any one hit from his Nidoking, most likely, unless it was, uh, Modest Specs, I think is the only thing that probably would not be a good thing to try to take hits from. But now we're in this wonderful, uh, Toxic War situation. And I think he's going to win it just because he has a move that can hit me super effective. But uh, that's, you know, that doesn't really bother me per se. Um, I'm just going to go for Earthquake to put some damage on him. He switches into Nidoking. Probably, I don't, I'm not actually sure why he switched into Nidoking right there. Uh, he didn't really have a reason to. I'm thinking that was a misclick. Because he, uh, either he was just looking at his team or something. I don't know. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because he had no reason to switch into Nidoking right there. In my opinion, at least. Uh... But that, with that said, Nidoking is now out of the way. He gets a free switch into Cloyster. Uh, I would have really liked to see him uh, sacrifice Gastrodon to bring in Nidoking safely and go for a Specs Ice Beam. Because uh, an Icicle Spear, we saw that it failed to KO um, my Sigilyph after my Sigilyph was burned. And Hippowdon, it has a much greater defensive bulk than my Sigilyph. So I don't see him KOing my Hippowdon either. Which is great for me, so that means I get to go for another Earthquake. Take out the Cloyster, hopefully. I know Cloyster has a Titanic defense. Uh, I actually don't take it out, and the Sandstorm finishes it off. So that's going to be great. Now he's going to be down to, I think, just his Gastrodon, if I'm not mistaken. So Gastrodon's going to end up coming in here. He's already toxic. There's not much that he can do, really. Uh, I guess he could take out my... Uh, my Apaladon with the Water move, but... At that point, I still have Stoutland left, which hits it on its weaker physically defensive side. And I still have a Paladon left. So, uh, Earthquake actually does a sizable amount of damage, which is uh, kind of impressive. And he's going to finish me off there with the Ice Beam. Critical hit, not needed. Complete overkill there. But uh, that just means I get to go back out in Stoutland, use Retaliate, which is great. Ending battles with Retaliate is just so much fun. And also, the re just Retaliate's animation in X and Y. It looks so cool. It's really nice that they took the time to really fully animate some of the moves. Meanwhile, some of the other moves, like, I don't know, Tackle. Of course, they don't look as good. But, you know, other moves like that just look really, really cool. So, I hope you all enjoyed this battle. Thank you very much, Uncanny Batman, for the match. It was a fun battle. Um, at least I think this was against Uncanny Batman. I, I, I marked the file as versus Jim, which doesn't really help when I'm trying to figure out who's, who it is against. But, um... I finally beat X and Y at a whopping, I think I was at 47 hours when I beat it. Uh, so I'm curious as to where you guys are at in X and Y. Uh, if you are so able, I would love to see what Pokemon you all are using. Just throw your uh, your team in the comments there. And uh, name, uh, name something that has surprised you about X and Y so far. I know for me, the... Uh, I guess the number one thing that has surprised me so far which is just probably how much I've been immersed in X and Y. Uh, whether it be the trainer customization or the fact that I can actually put in my entire name, Negro Stevo, in there. Um, that's been a really, really cool thing. Uh, also, if you guys look in the video description, I'm going to leave my friend code in the video description. Add me to your uh, friend codes and then uh, feel free to put your friend code in the comments as well. Uh, that way we could have lots and lots and lots of people added there and um, also feel free to just come check out the Skype chat that I have going on with a bunch of people that uh, I interact with every day all in one Skype add me on Skype Neko Stevo and I can add you to the chat we can help each other out with trades and letting people know where things are all that good stuff so 
make sure you answer the question that I asked earlier, leave your friend code in the comments, check out the description for my friend code, and then come and join me on Skype. You guys have a great day, and I will talk to you all later. Bye now.